In this lesson, we'll cover Internet Protocol Security, or IPsec, which is a set of security protocols used to provide authentication and asymmetric encryption for TCP IP network traffic. It's also used in VPNs. IPsec operates on top of the network layer, or layer 3, of the OSI model. The OSI model provides standards for communication in a computing system, which allows interoperability of various systems regardless of their internal structures. It's composed of seven layers, each layer being served by the layer below it. The bottom three layers are the media layers, and the top four layers are the host layers. Layer 3's primary goal is communication, not security. Applying IPsec on top of Layer 3 provides security to the communication through mutual authentication, integrity, non-repudiation, and confidentiality. The first protocol in the IPsec suite is called Authentication Header, or AH. It encapsulates all the host layer information, which includes layers 4 through 7, and replaces it with an authentication header. AH will detect if the IP address on Layer 3 changes through a checksum for all the data from Layers 3 through 7. This provides authenticity and integrity, but not confidentiality because the encapsulated data in the packet is not encrypted. If the packet were intercepted by a sniffer, the data could be read. AH provides authentication information in the form of a keyed hash, which is based on all the bytes in the packet. AH authenticates packets by digitally signing them, which prevents replay attacks. AH's assigned IP protocol number is 51. The second IPsec protocol option is Encapsulating Security Protocol, or ESP. It's commonly used with IPsec because it provides everything that AH provides plus confidentiality. ESP's assigned IP protocol number is 50. Like AH, ESP encapsulates the host layers 4 through 7 into a new layer 4 header called an ESP header. Unlike AH, it encrypts the encapsulated data, preventing someone from reading the data if it's sniffed. Also, unlike AH, ESP doesn't notice when a lower level IP address changes because there isn't a checksum that includes layer 3 information. To solve this problem, ESP works best with Network Address Translation, or NAT. An important consideration is that NAT can have problems with IPsec. Problems can come because IPsec secures the headers of packets and detects if the packets have been tampered with, and NAT needs to tamper with packets by changing source and destination IP addresses and ports. To fix this, something called NAT Traversal, or NAT-T, was created. NAT-T is designed to allow IPsec to function properly through a NAT device. It does this by encapsulating ESP packets inside a UDP packet and uses UDP port 4500. Another part of IPsec to consider is the set of specifications that negotiate between nodes to establish the IPsec relationship called a Security Association, or SA. These specifications can include cryptographic keys, authentication preferences, certificates, and algorithm selections. For example, both endpoints can agree to use the SHA-1 hashing algorithm instead of MD5, AES for symmetric encryption, and RSA for asymmetric encryption. Each tunnel of data uses three different security associations. First, a management channel is established so that routers or network nodes can exchange security information. Then, an outbound security association and an inbound security association are established, each with a unique identifier that's included with each packet sent across the channel. A security association can be established manually or automatically through a protocol called Ike Internet Key Exchange. Ike helps establish automatic SAs and a secure tunnel by providing a protected exchange of keys before the full IPsec transmission begins. Ike uses a Diffie-Hellman key exchange to establish a shared session secret. Mutual authentication is provided either by pre-shared keys on both endpoints or through certificates issued by a CA. Ike can also help automate the selection of the best security association for each connection. For example, if both endpoints support triple DES and AES for symmetric encryption, then Ike can help them negotiate the strongest security method, AES. Once that's agreed on, they're placed into their SAs. Now their symmetric encryption algorithm is set to encrypt and decrypt data with the IPsec tunnel. Finally, there are two modes that are available to use with IPsec circuits, including VPNs. The first is called tunnel mode. It's commonly used to provide secure communication between two network gateways. For example, it will allow any user at Corporate Office A to communicate safely with any user at Corporate Office B. 
because both offices have secured gateways acting as IPsec proxies. The second is called transport mode. It's used when two hosts connect directly with each other and the circuit is broken off after the session ends. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we discussed how IPsec secures IP traffic across the network. Then we looked at elements of the IPsec suite. First, we looked at AHs or authentication headers. Then we looked at ESP or encapsulating security payload. Remember to use NAT-T to enable ESP to function properly. Next, we discussed how security association specifications work. Then we looked at using Internet Key Exchange Protocol to implement the SAs. Finally, we covered the two IPsec modes, Tunnel Mode and Transport Mode. Tunnel Mode allows protected communication between users at both ends of the secure tunnel through their gateways, and Transport Mode is for direct connection between hosts for a specific session.